Well, hey there, and thanks for joining us for worship today. Whether you're joining us on Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, or hey, maybe it's Thursday in your lunch break. My name is James, and I'm the worship leader here. I've been loving this time of online worship. You know, it's different when the only people around you are your family. Now, this small group I'm a part of has been meeting online using Zoom, and it's been really awesome. See, our normal meetings go for about an hour or so, but online, it's not unusual for us to go as long as three hours because we just really enjoy each other's company. It's been a great time to connect with other people in the St. Mark family. So during this time, I encourage you to check out what small groups are available on our website. And if you're in junior high or high school, well, those groups are meeting online too. And our church really is a family. And even though we're quarantined, we're committed to each other and to growing in our faith. That's why we believe in membership. There's something powerful about joining the family, developing Christian friendships, and investing in the mission of the church to share the gospel. So if you've been tuning in and want to learn more about becoming a member of St. Mark, then we're going to be hosting online classes using Zoom. All you need to do to sign up is check the box on the digital welcome card on the website. And if you didn't know, every Sunday, our pastors preach two different sermons. One that's part of a series like No Fear, and one that walks through a book of the Bible. Right now, we're walking through the book of Acts. And we've redesigned the sermon page on our website to make it even easier for you to find what you're looking for. And now, you can also watch the sermons as videos. So if you've missed any of this No Fear series, now is your chance to go back and catch up before Pastor John and Mike Edge begin a brand new series called Thy Kingdom Come, which will highlight four of the teachings of Jesus about the kingdom of God. So while you're on the website checking out the new sermons page and signing up for the new member class, I encourage you also to fill out that welcome card to let us know that you're worshiping with us today, to send in any prayer requests you may have so we can be praying for you, and to drop off your offering using the online giving form. So as we begin worship today, we pray that you connect with God and worship Him fully. So thanks again for tuning in.
this 4th of July weekend, there's a verse that I want to take a look at as we prepare to go to God in confession. And it comes from Galatians chapter 5, and it says this, For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. You know, we're blessed in this country to have the freedoms that we do, especially the freedom of religion. Just like it says in Galatians, we have freedom in Christ. So let's pray. Lord God, you are so good, and we thank you for all the freedoms that we experience in our lives. Freedoms to worship you, freedom from sin, and eternal freedom when we meet you in heaven. As Paul alludes, we confess that we sometimes take advantage of our freedom. We don't serve each other through love, and we don't point people back to you. It's with our words, our actions, and even with our thoughts that we hurt others and we let you down, God. And so we say that we're sorry. As Jesus is King, let us experience anew the freedom he offers us through the forgiveness of sins. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. It's because of Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, that you have been forgiven. Forgiven and free in the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. to give you this. Really? Yeah. 
decisions. You know whoever sits here makes all the decisions, right? I know, and I'm always making decisions, but you make the perfect decisions, so you just sit right down and start making them. Wow, I'm honored. I mean, this feels great. <laughs> Kathleen, guess what? I just got my new credit card. It's time to go shopping. <laughs> oh, really? I yeah. thought your husband and you were going to pay off debt. Oh, yeah. I mean, money's kind of tight, but I figured he doesn't have to know about it. So do you want to oh. go with me? No. <laughs> no? Why? Uh, what I mean is, uh, I don't know. Um, oh. So let me check my schedule, and then I'll get back to you. Okay, yeah, give me a call. Okay. <laughs> Kat, what's going on? What do you mean? Well, I'm kind of one cheek in it here. Look, I just want to make sure we're on the same page. You wanted me to sit here, right? Well, of course. And whoever sits here makes all the decisions? Right. So what's the problem? Uh, there's not a problem. I just, I don't know what I was thinking. Really, please, here, sit down. As long as you're sure. I'm sure. Okay, okay. so let's start over. Okay. All right. Kat, I noticed that you've been losing your temper a lot lately. Right. So, okay, Jesus, you know what? I know what you're going to say, but um, see, you, do? you don't know the whole situation, you know? Oh, I, well, all I'm saying is that your attitude is a decision. Yes, of course, but I have a lot going on right now. <laughs> well, I know you're under a lot of pressure. Pressure? Jesus, you don't understand pressure, okay? This I, isn't working, Kat. What? We can't both sit on the seat. It's either me or it's you. Okay, I know. You know, I just, I didn't think it was going to be this hard, but here, just take it. No, I'm not going to take it. You have to give it to me. Okay, here. Kathleen, make a choice. I can't. You just did. Hey, St. Mark. Crazy times, isn't it? And I guess because of the craziness, I want to ask you a very serious question this morning, just to start off, and it's this. What is your yard looking like today? No, not the yard at your home, the, the yard of your life. I can see the wheels spinning. You're thinking, Pastor's going deep today. But when I say the yard of your life, I'm just saying, you know, the res relationships and the responsibilities, the commitments, the problems and hassles and all the stuff that is growing up there in your yard. And my guess is, if you're somewhat normal, right, you've got a big yard with a lot going on in it. And if you're like me, you'll probably find, at least at some of the time, it's completely out of control. So what do you do with that? When your life is out of control, when the things that are going on in your life don't make sense, and the fear that comes as a result, what do you do with that? The answer that God gives in his word today is simply this. You rely on the sovereignty of God. You see, the answer ultimately to overcoming the fear of losing control is not self-help or more self-management or trying to be in control of everything because, to be honest, that isn't working. The answer is self-surrender. It's saying, I'm giving it up to God. I can't control this thing. I know I can't control this thing, so I'm going to turn it over to the one person I know who can, God Almighty. And so this morning, I want to give you a crash course and what God's sovereignty actually looks like, because it's a pretty amazing thing. To begin with, God's sovereignty is his kingship over everything, based on his infinite power, his infinite wisdom and authority. It's God being God, God's kingdom over everything, based on his infinity, his infinite power and wisdom and authority, God's sovereignty over nations. Scripture says the Most High is sovereign over all the kingdoms of men and gives them to anyone he wishes. That should be sobering because he gives them to people for the people's blessings because they're following him or he gives them over to a sin of a nation for their confusion, for their harm, for their hurt. God's sovereign over people. Scripture says many are the plans in a man's heart but it is the Lord's purposes that prevails. God's sovereign over circumstances. Scripture says the Lord works out everything for his own ends, even the wicked for a day of disaster. You see all this craziness going on in our culture, and you think that God doesn't see, or God doesn't know, or God isn't able, but he's working even this wickedness. He's working it for the good of those who love him. God's sovereign over nature, the scripture says, worthy, O master, yes, our God, take the glory, the honor, the power, you created it all because you wanted it. And I probably should have added a fifth category, God is sovereign over spiritual powers even. In Ephesians 1 verse 21, it tells us that Jesus sits enthroned above all the principalities, over all the powers that are in the natural realm 
or the spiritual realm. In other words, right, God is sovereign over it all. As a theological proposition, you might say, well, I can buy that, right? God's sovereign over all of that. He made it all. I get it. He's in charge. But it does leave you with the question, if God's in control, just how in control is he? Does he just wind this thing up right on earth and and is now sitting back in heaven, sort of presiding over the big picture? Where every once in a while, he just kind of reaches down and makes a little mild correction along the way? Or works a miracle just to kind of keep things going on an even keel? Or is God really in control of it all? See, this is where providence comes in. God's providence is simply God's sovereignty in action. And when you get a feel for how active God is, not just in the big picture stuff, but in the details of your life, it will knock your socks off. In fact, the Bible tells us over and over and over that God is continually looking over and active in all the details of your life. That he has set out for you the exact number of the days that you should live. That he knows exactly the numbers of hair on your head, which is probably a fluid number in my case right now. But he knows the number, which is incredible. That he sees your tears, that he hears your cries, that he's even determined for you the place that you should live. All of those things. Now, you might have thought that when you went out and bought your house, you made that decision. But ultimately, God says that that was his decision too. And if you begin to catch hold of this truth, that God's not just presiding over the big picture stuff, that he's also passionately orchestrating the details of your very specific life. That's a truth that will set you free from having to be in control of everything in your life. I'm a control enthusiast. I admit it. It is horrible, right? Because I try to control everything when I know I can't and that I need God to intervene. And it's in those moments where I recognize it that he brings that peace back in. I know some of you guys can relate to that. But we need to get to a place where we can truly begin to grasp hold of that old saying, let go and let God. That's where peace comes from. But to be fair, perhaps, what exactly does that look like? God shares with us today three things. He says, first and foremost, we need to cooperate with his sovereignty. I mean, God's sovereignty allows me, first and foremost, to participate in a full life of certainties. Certainties. Now, now what does that mean? The Bible says that God is sovereign over all the details of our life, and yet somehow you're still a moral free agent with free choice and responsibility, and in God's universe, somehow both of those principles operate. We don't know how to reconcile them exactly, but we do know that they both operate. And so you have a role. One person put it like this, that God has the power to do good, and we have the power to mess it up. Amen? Amen. But in any case, the Bible says that you have a response to make to God's sovereignty. And the first response the Bible tells us is simply to cooperate with it. In Ephesians chapter 1, verses 8 through 10, he says this. He thought of everything, providing for everything we could possibly need, letting us in on the plans he took such delight in making. He set it all before us in Christ, a long-range plan in which everything would be brought together and summed up in him. Everything in the deepest heaven, everything on planet Earth. I know that most people think that life is uncertain. And so today I've got some good news for them. Life is certain with God. Now, now we don't know all the certainties, right? But, But God sure does. And he lets us in on a whole bunch of them in his word. We know what life is all about as believers. For example, life is about loving God with all of your heart and loving your neighbor as yourself. It's about glorifying God with your life and sharing the good news with people in the world. And we know how everything is going to wind up. We know Jesus is coming back. Justice is going to be served. You're going to receive your ultimate and final salvation. You're going to party in heaven with God for all of eternity. We know a whole lot about his program, right, that gets us there. We know that he's trying to conform us into the image of Christ and that he does that by putting us in a family of believers, church, where we can share our gifts together. He also does it through problems and difficulties that come and test our faith and our lives and that ultimately build character. 
We even know that when we get out of control our lives, right, and we're not even sure where God is doing or where he's going with all this stuff, we sort of know what God is doing anyway. In other words, when you, you add in the sovereignty of God, you begin to see that life actually is pretty certain. We don't know how it all comes together, right? We don't know it all, but we certainly know a good bit of what's going on because of God has told us in advance. And it's that understanding that calls us to two specific responses, to obey and to pray. And so we obey in response to God's sovereignty. In all your ways, the scripture says, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. And so we pray in response to God's sovereignty. Again, scripture says, I cry out to God most high, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. And when I obey, I align my actions with God's will and sovereignty. And when I pray, I align my own will and my own thoughts with God's will and sovereignty. And when I cooperate with God's sovereignty, and I obey and I pray, just like Proverbs 3, 6 says, he makes all my path straight. He makes things a whole lot smoother than they would be otherwise. A second response. A second response we make to God's sovereign claims to our life is simply this, to contemplate it, to think about it. God's sovereignty actually allows me to relax and to see the big picture, and I love that. And if you're like me, when the difficulties strike your life or when things just get out of sorts or they just get chaotic and you feel out of control, I make two very specific responses that are unhelpful, anger and action. When something bad happens in my life, my initial reaction almost always is, what in the world's going on here and why is this happening? I don't understand. And my second response is always to take action. I'm going to do something. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to do something. I want to jettison that problem out of my life as quickly as I can. I want to smooth over that hassle as fast as I can and get it just out of there. But God says two better responses are these. Rest and reflection. There's actually a cool illustration in the Bible about this, about King David. One day King David was traveling along with a bunch of his friends, right? And it was at a time of great turmoil in his life. Things were way out of control. His son Absalom, prince of Israel, led an insurrection against him and were trying to grab his kingdom for himself. And he was going to kill David. So David is traveling, trying to get away with some of his companions. And a punk of a guy named Shimei comes out to meet him. This guy Shimei, while well, he... While the civil, this little civil war is going on, is pelting David with rocks and calling out insults left and right. You're a man of blood. You're getting what's coming to you. You're a warrior. You, you caused a lot of this grief in other people's lives, and it's now all coming back upon you. And the whole time he's just throwing rocks at him as he's kind of sharing all these insults and, and trying to make him feel bad. Get out of here, you cursed. You're a man of blood. And Abishai, one of David's right-hand men, right, one of his generals, responds with anger and action. And he says two things. Why should this dead dog curse my lord, the king? And then he says, let me go over and take off his head. Right? That's action. I mean, that's some serious action. In other words, I'm going to jettison this problem right now for you, David. I'm going to jettison this problem right out of our lives. But David, a man after God's own heart, turns to Abishai and says, Sometimes you and I have so little in common. Let's not do anything, he says. Let's not get angry. Let's rest. Let's not take action. Let's reflect. How do I know that God didn't send Shimei into my life to tell me something I need to hear? Shimei was still responsible for his actions. And he was still wrong for doing it. But David saw a God behind, maybe sending him a message he needed to reflect on a little bit. Because there was some truth in what Shimei was saying, wasn't there? God didn't allow David to build the temple because he was a man of blood. He was a warrior. There was some truth in what Shimei was saying. But David was wise enough not to take action and get angry, but to rest and reflect on what God might be doing with the circumstance. And then there's a third response. And the third response we need to make is so critical because if all we needed to do is cooperate and can contemplate, we could easily give way to fatalism. And fatalism is this. God's going to do whatever he wants to do, and I have to go his way. And when he dumps a truckload of trouble on me, all I can do is just sit there and contemplate it. And it gets real fatalistic, but that's not what the Bible says. But again, it's like the guy I read about a few weeks ago 
First time he was confronted with God's sovereignty, he stormed out of the church, he went home and he fell down a whole flight of stairs. He got up, he brushed himself off and he looked up to heaven and he said, you know what? I'm glad that one's over, God. Like I was just kind of laying in wait for him, right? He's waiting to ambush me with a truckload of pain. I'm glad that one's over and I'll move on to the next one. And that might be the way it is if all we had to do is cooperate and contemplate. But there's a third response that is so key to God's sovereign claims on your life, and that is to celebrate it. Where you can look back, if you're a Christian, and you've been through some good times, and you've been through some bad times, but can't you look back and see that God was with you the whole time? Can't you look back and see that God was in control of it all, all the way? And aren't you thankful for that? Aren't there some tough lessons that you've learned and some tough rows that you've had to hoe that you've been glad that God gave them to you because it worked some character in you? It gave you a bigger image of who he is. We need to celebrate God's sovereignty over our life. In my life personally, God has used my dating life to develop leadership of all things. My, my daughter's struggle with a brain tumor to develop trust. Consequences in my life to develop perseverance and reverence. My life as a child to develop a, a sense of what is right and what is wrong. But all the way through my life, God has been working all things, even the crummy things, for good in my life. And I can see that looking back. On the back end of those experiences, I can see what he has done and what he is doing. And I believe a lot of you probably have the same kind of experiences that you could look at and tell about. As you look back over your life, you've seen God's hand in powerful ways. And his handwriting is all over it. And so you celebrate God's sovereignty. He's led you to this point in your life safely, and he's making it, you into the image of Christ. And so why fear the future? Well, as we look around, but he says, why fear the future? Why fear losing control? He's just going to keep you on the same program that he's had you on this whole time. Some of you need to get on that program. You're not qualified to run your own life. You're just not. There's too many things you cannot control. In fact, if you think you can get it all under control on your own, it's not ever going to happen for you. In Romans 8, verse 28, Paul writes, We know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who've been called according to his purpose. Are you afraid of losing control of your life, <laughs> especially right now? To be honest, I'm afraid of, of being in control of mine. I can't do Romans 8, 28. I can't work all things in my life for good, but God can and is doing it all the time. And so my prayer today is that in some way your image of God has been expanded just a little bit. For Christianity is about a relationship with a big God, not a knee-high God or a head-high God or even a sky-high God. It's about a relationship with the most high God who sees the big picture but is passionately into the details of your life. And because of his love for you, he wants to run it for your good if you let him. So abdicate the throne. Get out of the cockpit. Get off the bridge and finally let God be God. For God's the only one who can truly control your life. And so my prayer today is give it to him. And let him start working things always for your good in the midst of this very, very crazy world. And all God's people said, amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious always unto me. He look upon you now with his favor and grant you forever his peace. Guys, go in that peace today and serve your Lord always with joy. Amen. Jesus, let your kingdom come here. Let your will be done.
Let your glory reign, shining like the day, King of heaven, come. Oh, amen. Go in God's peace and serve the Lord. We'll see you guys next Sunday.